all right friends let's continue with the dual firework architecture or dmz the two firewalls of dmz architecture looks like this this is the internet and the guy here is using the internet service connects through the modem and then there is this firewall external firewall and internal firewall in between there is the public server and the person is able to you know enter between enter the server side private enterprise network through the firewall okay sometimes you are able to cross this firewall but you're not able to cross this firewall to get into a private network which means that you do not have sufficient rights or you're not authenticated to get to that page you need to contact your network administrator the defense to Securing e-commerce networks personal firewall is a network node designed to protect an individual user's desktop system from the public network by monitoring all the traffic that passes through the computer's network interface card. So whatever traffic is passing, it is noted which IP address it's coming from, what time, what location in the world, geographic location, and what kind of data transmission took place during that time period additional virus malware and botnet protection virtual private network is a network that uses the public internet to carry information but remains private by using encryption to scramble the communications authentication to ensure that information has not been tampered with and access control to verify the identity the identity of anyone using the network so a virtual private network offers a, a greater degree of privacy network privacy and any kind of malware or botnet or any kind of uh, you know malicious activity is prevented protocol tunneling is a method used to ensure confidentiality and integrity of data transmitted over the internet by encrypting data packets sending them in packet across the internet and decrypting them at all the des at the destination address so that's protocol tunneling encrypting and then decrypting at the receiving end intrusion detection system or ids is also famous it is a special category of software that can monitor activity across a network or on a host computer watch for suspicious activity and take automated action based on what it sees so these systems also report to the user that hey we just saw this uh, criminal activity and this is how we combated it so it's uh, intrusion detection systems are just like your watchdogs which bark at every suspicious thing okay this is a good analogy if you have want to have a secure uh, environment around your house you have uh, around your electronic commerce system you have intrusion detection systems dealing with dos attacks cloud computing prevents dos disk operating system disk operating system attacks the dealing with cloud computing prevents the disk operating system attacks honeynet is a network of honeypots honeypot is a production system example firewall routers web servers ba database servers that look like it does real work but that acts as a decoy and is watched to study how network intrusions occur okay honeypot is like uh, just like it says it attracts all kind of malicious activity just to observe how these activities can be prevented email security is further provided by the kind of client email client that you're using all right and messages encrypted and decrypted plain text messages are discontinued or discouraged for use with within the electronic commerce business areas the defense three are general controls internal controls compliance and other defense mechanisms general controls are controls established to protect the system regardless of the specific application for example Protecting hardware and controlling access to the data center are independent of the specific application. So general controls are, you know, not specific. <laughs> Just like the name says, they are general in nature and they prevent general attacks. 
application control uh, controls that are intended to protect specific applications. So application controls are more specific than the general controls. Major defense controls, defense control, general and application. So this is how it is. General application of physical access, data security, communication, administrative and other. Access includes biometrics or web control. Applications are input, processing, output. So these are specific application controls. And the web control for access within the application control includes authentication, encryption, cable testers, firewalls, virus protection, and biometrics also included in the applications. Defense control. The defense three or general control, internal controls, compliance, and other defense mechanism, general administrative and other controls, physical controls, and administrative controls. Application controls and intelligent agents. Intelligent agents are software applications that have some degree of reactivity, autonomy, and adaptability. As is needed in unpredictable attack situations, an agent is able to adapt itself based on the changes occurring in its environment. And then it also supplies recommended solutions to the problems that it encounters. Intelligent agents are like these. Agents in collective communicate over secure links on the internet or intranet. Malicious agents with the, these are malicious agents are detected and cut off from the collective. Property authenticated data is allowed into the collective, but bad information is rejected. So these are the intelligent agents that watch out for uh, malicious agents. The defense three, general controls, internal controls, compliance and other defense mechanisms, protecting against spam, controlling the assault of non-solicited pornography and marketing, can spam act, law that makes it a crime to send commercial email messages with false or misleading message headers or misleading subject lines. You know, and you open up those messages and only to find something very, very inappropriate and you get very, very disgusted. So, and especially if there's a child involved and they get exposure to such kind of emails, it is breaking the law. So, under the Can Spam Act, you can sue the person or sue the parties who have sent you such an offensive content through email. Protecting against pop-up ads, protecting against social engineering attacks, protecting against phishing, protecting against malvertising, protecting against spyware, using policies and training. Business continuity and disaster recovery plan, disaster avoidance is the key. You know, prevention is the best cure. That's what they say. So avoidance is an approach oriented towards prevention. The idea is to minimize the chance of avoidable disasters such as fire or other human caused threats. Uh, in a networking environment, a lot of problems can occur. For example, you know, you could be exposed to uh, some kind of a thunderstorm or hail or any anything, uh, an earthquake or tsunami or anything that could shake up the building where the data's, data centers or the servers are residing and they could crash. Another problem is, you know, some kind of a program, uh, uh, unintentional programming error that just blows up the system. All of these uh, situations, you know, whether directly, uh, which may, you know, whether created deliberately or through an accident have to be uh, covered for in the business continuity and disaster recovery planning. Business continuity services and IT recovery process. You have to have a total continuity program management, overall project management, crisis management, risk management, and industry ben benchmark. Then you have business continuity program design, which is also, it keeps improving in iterations. Anything with cycle form tells you that you need to continuously develop and improve the program. This is one such program. Understand business and IT requirements. Evaluate current capabilities, 
develop continuity plan. IT recovery program design is the access Assess IT capabilities, develop recovery procedures, and design solutions. IT recovery program execution, recovery tasks, testing, other functional exercise of recovery plan and procedure. Business continuity, disaster recovery, risk, security auditing, and risk management. Risk management and cost benefit analysis, risk management analysis. Calculating the cost of a fraud prevention system and ethical issues. The drivers of electronic commerce security management, senior management commitment and support, unified front. They, these kind of unified fronts, they are the drivers of a secure electronic commerce networking environment. Senior management commitment and support is required. Security policies and trainings are, should be in place. Security procedures and their enforcement should be in place. Security tools, hardware, and software should be in place. Electronic commerce security procedure policies and training acceptable use policy, policy that informs users of their responsibilities when using company networks, wireless devices, customer data, and so forth. Policy that informs users of their responsibilities when using company networks, wireless devices, customer data, and so forth. So acceptable use policy is something that you get digitally signed by the user who is using your website. And these are part of your policies and procedures of using your website. And have to be displayed very plainly and clearly for all users to and visitors to see. Electro electronic commerce security uh, procedures and enforcement business impact analysis, BIA, an exercise that determines the impact of losing the support of an electronic commerce resource to an organization and establishes the escalation of the loss over time, identifies the minimum resources needed to recover and prioritizes the recovery of the processes and supporting systems. Why is it difficult to stop internet crime making shopping inconvenient? Lack of cooperation from credit card issuers and ISP internet service providers, shoppers negligence, ignoring electronic commerce security best practices. Computing Technology Industry Association is a non-profit trade group providing information security research and best practices. So because of these bullet points here, it is very hard to stop internet crime. Design and architecture issues, one of them, lack of due care and business practices, standard of due care. Care that a company is reasonably accept, expected to take based on the risks affecting the, it's electronic commerce, business, and online transactions. So standard of due care is when you do a complete analysis of, say, strengths, weakness, threat, and opportunities, somewhat like a SWOT analysis, you come up with a due care plan. Managerial issues now. All right. Now, as we end this chapter, we need to discuss what, as a manager, of an electronic commerce business, what kind of issues are you facing uh, in terms of security and fraud? Number one is what is the best electronic commerce security strategy for my company? Okay, for the scrumptious indulgence business, what is the best electronic commerce security strategy for my company? The questions that I need to ask is where is the company located? What kind of laws and policies will be affecting the company's success? And, you know, many kind of other questions that will answer the best electronic commerce security strategy question. Is the budget for electronic commerce security adequate? What steps should business follow in establishing a security plan? Should organizations be concerned with internal security threats? What is the key to establishing strong e-commerce security? Okay, I have created this lecture here at http zubianmughal.cloudaccess.net slash cvt 
slash story.html. This is created using Articulate Storyline. And if you want, you can access this course from right here. And if you look at the course, it talks about what is a virus and its symptoms, types of viruses. It's an interactive, not a course, but um, it's like a quick review, okay, and how to protect yourself. So it talks about a lot of things and it also provides a lot of checklists, lots of external uh, resources that you can use, types of viruses. Okay, click here if you cannot see the video. So I strongly suggest that as, oops, that as a student of this course, please take a good look at all the different kinds of problems, security problems that are going to come to your way. Learn more about them and try to see how you can counter counteract with them in your own electronic commerce environment. Should organizations be concerned with internal security threats? What is the key to establishing strong electronic commerce security? Yes, organizations should be concerned with internal security problems because sometimes the man-made disasters are unintentional and one problem in the inner inside, you know, even though there is no intention to hack, but sometimes, you know, security is breached due to one wrong step. So all of these uh, wrong steps or exceptions need to be handled with your uh, with the aid of, uh, with the aid of your secure security programs placed in your website what is the key to establishing strong e-commerce security keep researching keep evolving with time if you look at the summary the key to establishing strong e-commerce security basic electronic commerce security issues and terminology we covered a lot of terminologies in this core in this chapter Threats, vulnerabilities, and technical attacks. We talked, talked a lot about those things as well. Please take a look at this lecture here. Not lecture, but a just small, uh, you know, review course. And it will tell you a lot of things that you can read. And also, uh, it will give you, uh, you know, additional information for your use. Threats, vulnerabilities, and technical attacks, internet fraud, phishing, and spam, information assurance, securing electronic commerce, access control, and communications. How do you do that? We talked about it in the electronic commerce website. In the, in the uh, first few sections of our chapter. Technologies for protecting networks, the different controls and special defense mechanisms, protecting from fraud, role of business continuity and disaster recovery planning, enterprise-wide electronic commerce security. Why is it impossible to stop computer crime? So you should be able to answer all of these questions. You have covered everything in this massive chapter. You, very, you should be proud of yourself. You've done a good job. Up next, I don't think I have enough material for put your learning to practice if the, for this chapter except that i would go through the lecture here okay and explain to you how you can make it work towards your own advantage okay so till then take care i'll see you shortly and put your learning to practice for security and fraud bye bye